This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 47. Welcome to Comic Geek Speak, episode 47, brought to you in conjunction with WorldFamousComics.com. Your spot on the internet for the best comic book and entertainment related columns, contests, features, reviews, news, resources, and more. I'm Brian Deemer. I'm Jamie D. I'm Peter Rios. We are sexy bitches, yeah! <laughs> and welcome to the show. 47. Wow. I know we're closing in on the big gala event that will be episode 50. We have no idea what we're doing yet, but. <laughs> we're going to do it all naked. That's, I think that's what we're going to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just Send get that mental picture. I'll stay home again people. for that one. <laughs> Peter will call in for that show. Well, that's why I'm bringing the girls. That's the whole thing. Oh, well, then he doesn't want to call in for that. There you go. Uh, there'll be a special DVD release. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> pictures, pictures, pictures. Uh, before we get started, I just want If to... you were to be on our show... No, sorry. <laughs> Nude. <laughs> naked. <laughs> See, you're a girl. You're, you're over 18 and want to be uh, a girl and want to be on our show. Yeah, and, like we won't, and we won't let Matt be here for that yeah. episode. <laughs> No, because I think his head would explode. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> They'll be like the Snapple girls on Stern yeah. when they come in. Hey, you know, I met a girl who was the Chapter 3 girl for Private Parts. Oh, really? Yeah, a guy that I used to uh, go to Kung Fu with. Um, we had a Halloween party at the Kung Fu school, and he showed up with his girlfriend. And, uh, you know, she was real attractive and everything, and we were just talking. She was really cool, and it just came up in conversation that, she was the, you know, if you look in private parts of the book, each chapter shows a girl in a bikini holding a sign, like a ring card girl or mm -hmm. whatever, and she's the chapter three girl. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were talking about when they, in the movie, when they did, like, the ch different chapters and they had the girls introduce, like, no, different parts. No, of, okay. the, of the book. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go back and look at that. Thing. Yeah. I have to yeah. pull my, my private parts out. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why well, he named minute, it that. I know, he did. Okay, the minute I said it, thought it, I went, this, all right, this is not going to I got to go out. grab my private my parts. parts. <laughs> Stand back while I whip this out. <laughs> all right, before we get started, I just want to remind everyone of our contest for August. It is um, produce for us a, like, roughly three-minute segment uh, covering anything new and exciting in the world of manga and the same thing for the world of anime. We want two different segments. And if we select yours as the best, then we will ask you if you would like to do for us a regular uh, update for us. So um, that's the contest. Also, a uh, reminder for our August Book of the Month Club selection. It is The Walking Dead by Robert Kirkman, Trade Paperback Volume 1, which if you're so inclined, you can get it from InStockTrades.com for 40% off. Uh, if you're really into it, you can also get Volumes 2 and 3 also at 40% off, so it's a hell of a deal. Volume 1 is only 6 bucks with the discount, so you know if you'd like to read along with us, that's a pretty inexpensive way of doing so. And uh, if you order $50 or more from them, you get free shipping. So I'm sure there's plenty of things on your list. Go, go place an order. Yep. Uh, so, Peter, last time uh, you weren't here and Jamie asked us, uh, if there is one comic uh, from Marvel or DC, because basically every independent book falls into this category, one comic from Marvel or DC that you think is not getting enough coverage, not getting enough readers, uh, that you would you know, urge people to read, what would it be? I'm going to put out there um, Otherworld. It's a Vertigo series by Phil Jimenez. Two years back when I met him, he's, I asked him, what's the one book you wish – you could be on or that you could do. <clears throat> and he actually turned to me and said, well, I'm actually doing that book now. It's in pre-production, and I can't really talk about it. And uh, he said, but it should be out in about a year or so. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it's Otherworld. It's um, sort of a fantasy, I guess you could kind of, even though it goes beyond that, fantasy kind of book. Um, it has tons of characters in, beautiful artwork, and it has a lot of his own ideas about a lot of things. Like, I, I, it's even hard to like start. You know, I mean, he this is very personal to him. Um, it's up to seven issues. It's I believe it's going to twelve. Twelve, yes, twelve right. issue maxi series. I think they're kind of taking because uh, issue seven was already solicited, and in this newest 
previews, there wasn't an issue. So I think he might be taking a little break. Because they mentioned something. I read an article somewhere where they wanted the first seven issues to really be like an act. So okay. I don't know if that means they're going to be expanding it or not. But um, for me, anybody who really you know invests that much personal interest into their book, I think that's worth checking out. Yeah, I've I've picked it up. I haven't got a chance to <coughs> read it yet. Um, I'm kind of I, fi- I figure since it's a maxi series like that, it, it'll be one that I'll want to sit down and just read all in one shot. Because mm-hmm. I I started to read the first one, and you can usually get an idea on when you read it if it's going to be uh, vast. And it it seemed like it was going to be va- a vast story, a lot of characters, and with the amount of comics I read in a month. I knew that I would forget about it by the time number two came out. So I have them on the, on the pile once I either, like you said, I, I didn't realize it was, it was going to stop at seven, but maybe what I'll do is I'll sit down and I'll read the first seven right. and just you know try to get a scope. Because like I said, it looks like a vast, big story. And like Peter said, Philomen is, is one of the best artists out there right now. I mean, if you like uh, George Perez... Uh, his artwork, he is a, a student of him. Um, very similar styles and gorgeous, you know, gorgeous artwork. So I, I recommend that too. I'd like to see more people pick yeah. that up. Lots of detail in his artwork. Yeah, I love Be- it. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. As a as a follow up to my uh, selection, I think it was just a day, a day or maybe two after we recorded that episode. Marvel announced, I, I suggested, uh, one of, I had a couple suggestions because all of them had been canceled, but one of them was Sentinel. I was saying that I really, Sean McKeever's Sentinel, I really wish that that book could have gone farther. And they just announced that they're bringing it back for a five-issue miniseries. Hmm. Because the sales of the digests have been so strong, uh, because Sean McKeever won uh, the Eisner for most underappreciated or underappreciated talent or something like that. Talent that? deserving of, of more, more recognition. recognition yeah, yeah like that's that. it. Yeah. And uh, and because people have been mess- on message boards and emailing Marvel saying, we want more Sentinel, we want more Sentinel. So they said, all right, we'll do more Sentinel. So they got a five-issue miniseries that's going to be solicited. And I'm sure it'll be collected in a, in a digest. Uh, and, I wonder uh, if they'll do another uh, a hardcover type. Was it enough? How many was it? One or two well, judges? It was two. It was twelve issues of the original Sentinel. Maybe they'll do like they did with Runaways, do a hardcover of it, and you know before this one comes out, kind of leading into it. They could stir some interest. Yeah. But uh, so that it's cool. I mean, we were talking about the whole theory of how how can digest or trade sales help a book stay alive, and this is a clear example of how it can. That yeah. and an Eisner helps too. You know? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say wanted, wanted to cash in a little bit on some good press. Which is what Marvel needs sometimes. Yeah. In uh, other trade news, uh, this is very exciting. DC just announced that their first two volumes of Showcase, the Showcase presents Superman and Showcase presents Green Lantern, uh, which is basically their version of the Marvel Essentials, where it's black and white, big mm-hmm. tomes. They just announced that the first two, for a limited time, are going to be nine ninety nine instead of sixteen ninety nine. So they dropped the price seven bucks. Yeah, it pisses me off because now I'm going to buy them. I was kind of holding off. I mean, I, I love <laughs> the essentials, but I was looking at what they were. They were. Do you need a cough drop, Peter? I was. I, need to go. I, need to go. Sorry. I was looking at what they were going to, uh, what they were, you know, printing with them, and I had a lot of the, uh, had a lot of the Green Lantern stuff because I had picked up very cheaply somewhere along the line. I can't remember exactly where the Green Lantern archives, and I kind of stayed away from that one. And the Superman, I've never been a big Superman fan, so. I thought, oh, eventually I'll get them, but now it's going to be nine ninety five for a short amount of time. Sons of bitches. Yeah, I, I ordered them because uh, DCB had both of them at 50% off, so mm-hmm. then they were eight fifty, and I thought, well, you know, I know nothing about Superman or Green Lantern from the Silver Age. I have no idea. So I'll pick them up for eight fifty. Yeah. But I emailed them today. I haven't gotten a response yet. I said, I want to know. Are they going to be five dollars now? Because yeah. my God, if they're five bucks, if they're five bucks, I may about I it. may have to add them to my list type deal. I may have to put them on and yeah. say, "How could Please you add I mean, them to my list?" You know, five bucks for five hundred. They're five hundred pages each. You yeah, know, I mean, you, you can't go wrong at all with that. That's there's that's a penny a page. Yeah, it's a cheap ass comic. God, I would buy. No, if they're five dollars, it's a penny a page. Oh, it's two it cents yeah. a page yeah. if they're. Yeah, Peter, 10, Peter was 10 using his vast uh, mathematics skills <laughs> wrong, 
but um, you know, I mean, you, you could almost print Barbie for five dollars, you know, at that, and I'd almost buy it. But uh. <laughs> um, and in other trade news, DC uh, today just released their uh, trade paperback uh, schedule for November and December, and in those two months, they're going to be reprinting all four of the uh, lead-in miniseries to Infinite Crisis. So you get the Day of Vengeance trade paperback, which has Day of Vengeance 1 to 6, Action Comics 826, Adventures of Superman 639, and Superman 216 for 13 bucks. And also in November is the OMAC Project, which has the OMAC Project 1 through 6, Countdown to Infinite Crisis, and Wonder Woman 219 for 14.99. And then in December is... Uh, why is that one more expensive and has well, it less? Well, has, it has more pages, though. The page oh, count is higher. Oh, because of the 80-page the countdown. That's why. Yeah. It's 256 pages versus 224. Right. So it's only 25 but extra pages, and it's $2 more. I don't know. Yeah. But, it's, but it's weird that they're only putting... I mean, I know why they're putting the Wonder Woman in, since I've read it, but I'm not going to spoil it. But why put that in and then not put the, the rest of the Sacrifice story yeah. in? I mean, I, we're trying to think about it. You can read it without seeing the rest of it, but if you've seen the rest of it makes that one all the more poignant. So that's kind of weird. And then in December is the Ran Thanagar War, which is just Ran Thanagar War 1 through 6 for 13 bucks. And, you know, and again, now this one only has 144 pages, and it's twelve ninety nine, the same price as the one that was 225 pages. Hmm. It's like, well, what's the. D- and then the same with Villains United. Is Villains United one through six for thirteen dollars, which only has one hundred and sixty pages. So it's there. Some of the prices seem to be off a little bit. You know, <laughs> yeah, I think whatever. It, yeah, maybe more. One of those where it, they figure Rand Thanagar and Villains United might not sell as many, so they're going to push the price up to get the. Uh, get, or that or they just figure everyone's going to buy them anyway, so they'll just make as much money as they can. Yeah, true. I don't know. But I mean, it's good news because we'll only be at that point. We'll only be a couple months into Infinite Crisis, so you won't be that far behind, like me, to re- buy all four of those trades, read them, and then know what the hell's going on. So, yeah. now, are you going to want to read Infinite Crisis before you read those miniseries? I don't know. Do you think I should? No, I think you should read the miniseries first. So that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Oh you think yeah, I yeah. should read the miniseries. So you're going to have to borrow it from us before and, and get the trade. I mean, is that going to be worth it then to get the trade if you already have read it? I think you, I, don't know. I think you should. It's yeah. I I have a feeling there's going to be a lot that's going to be in this that, especially with like the Villains United and the OMAC, and the Days of Vengeance. Wait, what month is that? Rand Sanagar. I don't know how much that's going to really tie in, but we'll see. They I keep think. saying in the solicitation that mm-hmm. and, like because I, I I was wondering the same thing. And every solic- solicitation I read, and then every cover that I see, mm-hmm. the two covers that they put out, all four miniseries are are spotlight mm-hmm. in in this in the. Infinite Crisis miniseries. So, mm-hmm. l- so let me get this straight. So, so Infinite Crisis comes out in October. Yep. But this fir- these first two mini th- mi- trades will be out in November. Yeah. So I'd be one month. <laughs> well, yeah, but the, the second <laughs> but two that, won't be out, so you really yeah. would be two months. If and you if you want to do those special episodes. Yeah, I know. That we were just talking about. You pricks. <laughs> I mean, not like it's... Okay, it, well, you, I mean, you can come and say, this is Brian Deemer, and then walk out of the room, and we can do the rest no, of the No, I show. know. It's weird. It's like, but see, if I if I, well, if I no. borrow your issues and read them, then I won't feel like right. I need to buy the trades, but I'd like to have the trades because... Not at least know, right it, away. I mean, you could always buy them. But, yeah, but you if know they're what? 50% off... Add then this then to that, well, yeah. the, what we talked about before. Don't, re- don't read the miniseries and see if you still can get out of the... Yeah. Like I said, it's like. only, only going to be two issues yeah. that I'm going to be behind right. on, and then I'll have read them, and then I'll understand right. more. And then after that, you can go, oh, you know what, I really wish I would have read them, or not. And then, you know, we'll do this, we can throw that into that whole experiment about crossovers, you know, like, do you really need to read everything? See, this is one of those things where I kind of wish DC would have just said, look, they're all coming out in October, the same month that the first co- you know, Infinite Crisis comes out. And it's they like, they're so close. They could have done that, too. Why not just release them? They could have done, but that's what we keep saying, that's the end of Dio's philosophy is right. that he's not m- printing these for trade paperbacks. He's printing these to be comics to be read each month. I, I, I understand all that, but at that point, it's like, okay, well, the series are over, mm-hmm. well, actually, and now we have this big series coming, and now we need well, to get I mean, more people to read this by you know making this stuff available. I don't know. I mean, that, that's okay. Rand Sanikar, I didn't read the Adam Strange series. I waited for the trade. Now, the trade's coming out this month. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I'll get it, uh, you know, the beginning of September. I'm on issue four of Rand Thanagar. It's There's just gathering dust in my pile because even though I've been told I don't have to read the Adam Strange series to understand it, I still want to read the Adam Strange series to see, to make well, my it understanding... Well, ends in even, a big way, like, you, know. you know. Even deeper going into this, right. and then I'll have, you know, all that to catch up on, so. Well... I don't know. We'll, yeah, see. we'll see. I'll probably read Infinite Crisis first and then just go back and get caught up and on the trades. And then we can get your thoughts on how well that read that way. Yeah. That's I'll cool. T- I'll, t- I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to throw a little thing in here for reading a big crossover without getting the extra books. Just got done reading House of M number three. I was lost a little bit. I mean, I, I knew what I was reading, but I have a feeling that if had I read a lot of the other offshoot books, a lot of the other House of M books... It might have made my experience just a little bit deeper. So I don't know how much I'm really going to enjoy this series without, because I'm not going to read anything else. I'm not reading any of the new House of M things. I just want, you know, I want to read this series, see where it's going. And so far, like I said, with issue three, now maybe once I read issue four and five, it'll make more sense. But I, I kind of read this one. I was like, no, wait a second. Did I remember that? Did that happen last issue? Because I only read number two maybe two weeks ago. So be interesting to see where that goes i'm wondering what i'm gonna assume that house of m will be a, like a large hardcover you know and i'm wondering what else they're gonna put in if they're gonna put every single offshoot into it I, and if they're gonna like put it all in chronological order so that you read it in the way that all the events take place i have a feeling what they're gonna do is uh, i think they can maybe take a uh, take a cue from what they did with uh, avengers disassembled uh, just and just do a, just you know this will be house of m Iron Man trade, boom! This will be the House of M Hulk trade. Actually, boom. that's true. They already announced that they did that. That they're doing that. They already solicited. I forgot all about that. They already released that list. Oh, okay, and it, that's exactly that. what it was. Mm-hmm. And then I looked at them, and at first I went, "Oh, I'll get them all." And then I went, "Nah, I'm just getting the House of M. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> you know, they're not sucking me in." Now, if it was done as a big hardcover, yeah. then I would be more likely to get, they'd get almost as much money from me, and you know. Like, be interesting. That's one or two hardcovers. Speaking of this crossover tie-in stuff, I just, I just got the trade for Secret Wars, the original Marvel Secret Wars. Good stuff. And at the same time, I was reading um, Volume Four of the John Byrne Fantastic Four Visionaries, and in that <laughs> happens to be the Secret Wars crossover stuff. Mm-hmm. But again, you you don't have to read it because they basically reprint in the first issue of Secret Wars exactly what's in the John yeah. Byrne issue. But what's funny is that's one issue, and then the next issue, boom, they're back. Secret Wars is over. Yep. But even though in the comics in the timeline, Secret Wars twelve issues, so it was going on for a year. But it, you read the next Fantastic Four, and it was like you skipped to the end of that year, or you know whatever. Not not a year in the timeline, but a year in the actual calendar of com- you have to wait for comics to yeah, come out. Yeah, twelve issues. So you don't know what happened in Secret Wars, even though you're continuing along the Adventures mm-hmm. of the Fantastic Four one month later. Now that's the way you do a crossover. Yeah, and, you and don't the, actually cross it over in any of the books. You just say when you when you're done with Secret World, you'll understand what happened. And then there were even big revelations. I mean, they came back, and this isn't spoiling anything. Uh, you know, there's the, well, I won't say, they had a new team member, you didn't know what happened to the right. old team member, you were like, what the, and, I yeah. mean, and he did that with, with, with the Spider-Man too, he, he suddenly showed up in the black, his black, black costume, costume right. and it was like, what the hell is this, and then. You had to wait went, a year to find out. Yeah. Which is, you know, pretty darn cool. But again, you didn't have to read that no. fa- issue of Fantastic, there was nothing in that issue of Fantastic Four that wasn't in, like, three panels in the first Secret War. Yep. You know, it was great. Yeah, just a setup, and all of a sudden, blink, they, they were gone, blink, they're back. Yep. Now, on the flip side of that, though, some of those, uh, I had that I had the issues for that burn run, and one or two of them tied into Avengers books, so you never really got, because I didn't have those Avengers books, so I never really got the second half of that story. Yeah, well, that, that was thing what's with the cool vision. about, tra- yeah, in the trade, they have that Avengers issue, and they also have two issues of the Thing miniseries that was going on, or was it a, se- a series? Thing. series, a maxi yeah. series, or something? It was a regular series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a regular series. So they have two of those issues, and they're put in chronological order. So, you know, did yeah, they put well. the? Uh, cause I have it. I don't. I didn't look at it. Did, did they put the issue of Alpha Flight? Cause there was yes, the issue of they Alpha did put Flight. the Alpha Flight. Issue oh, that's there. the other one that I didn't have. That the crossed over. Well, oh, guess I'm not reading that. Yeah, because they, they actually finished the story. Yeah, in yeah those it starts. Issues yeah, it starts with Namor and. But again, it was all books that Byrne was doing. Yeah, you know, so he mm-hmm. was. 
he just I mean and, and you know what those are the kind of crossovers I don't mind if it's just one issue every now and again I really don't yeah. have a problem with that yeah it's, I like that too it was it, it, especially when you're reading in the trade like that it just makes it kind of fun you know yeah. um Peter you want to talk about our map our map, yes. Um, along with the world domination map that is on the blog, I'm starting a United States state by state, city by city map. City by God city? help me. Yeah. Well, if they've mentioned a city, I put it on the map. Oh, okay. So I've hit. If you're on the forum and you've listed a specific city and state, I got gotcha. you. You're covered. If you've sent in an email, basically what we want you to do is either. Um, maybe I'll create a sticky on the form where people can just put in where yeah, they're from. That's a good idea. Um, if you're on the form and you don't exactly have uh, your city and state, if you want to just go right to that, that uh, thread, that would be great. Or if you want to just send an email uh, and just saying, you know, this is uh, who I am and this is where I'm from. Yeah, because basically I'm too lazy to go through the hundreds and hundreds right. of emails that we already have and right. sift through and try to find And unless locations. for some reason I house it again and you show me all the ones, unless you delete it, I don't know. But uh, we, I'd love this. I have like about 50 right about now, 50 cities on it, and I know we have lots more. So uh, we're just basically putting down uh, – Anybody who's ever, you know, we're trying to just pinpoint where everybody, all our listeners are at. And, and, and another reminder that if you are not only in the United States but in some other country that we do not have on our global domination mm -hmm. map, please just shoot us an email and let us know. Just so you're listening. That's all we want to know. That's all we want to know that you're out yep. there and you're in such and such a country and so we can mark it off on the map. And by the way, on that map, Pennsylvania is currently kicking ass. We've got like six or seven. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, California may have more because oh, yeah. well, some people just put like North California, South California. So I'm like, well, I don't know where that, you know, where exactly they're at. But as of now, Pennsylvania's got like a bunch. So that's funny. if you want your state to win, that's right. you need to send in where you're from. Pennsylvania representing. <laughs> Pennsylvania's in, in the house. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think – oh, you know what? Let's just do a couple listener emails. Speaking sure, of while we're on email, Speaking of. I almost forgot, and we just have so many to get through here. All right. This one is okay. – <laughs> It's a confusing look. Did uh, – huh. Oh, and – just recently, we, we read another email from this guy, Joe Jans. Remember, I, I made a... I that was the last, that was was last podcast, yeah. Peter no, missed I, wasn't and, there. I said, it, it's, it's not John, John Jones. Jones. It's <laughs> Joe, Joe Jans. Jans. Um, it says, I used to collect Lady Death and Evil Ernie comics a long time ago, uh -oh. starting with the number one Lady Death foil cover edition, and I've collected quite a few regular releases and some trades as well. I just realized I was ripping yes, off Yes, that's Death. exactly why I went, uh-oh, <laughs> <laughs> Keep reading. Let's see what he <laughs> says. Uh, I ended up taking a comic book vacation, a.k.a. got married and started a new career and life and got too busy. Damn women. For a few years and finally got back into collecting comics again just a few months ago. I am now turning into a Marvel zombie, but I also noticed that there is no more Chaos Comics. This may be a really dumb question, but what happened to Chaos Comics? I thought I had heard that someone died, but never did get the full story on it. I can still find some Old Lady Death, Purgatory, and Evil Ernie comics here and there to fill in the gaps of my collection, but I just thought it was strange to have that company disappear like that. Any information would be a great help. Love the show. Keep talking, and I will keep listening. Uh, well, actually, that one guy did die, right? Stephen, it just hit me the name because when we were talking about yeah. it, earlier, I couldn't remember. It was Stephen Hughes, I'm pretty yep. sure, yep. was the name. He died of cancer. He was the artist. Long as he was the basically, I'm pretty sure he was the artist for Lady Death, and uh, he died of cancer, and then unfortunately bankruptcy hit, and he Chaos Comics went under. He sold the rights to um, CrossGen, Cross and then uh, CrossGen went bankrupt. Say that, that then, like the f the finger of death uh, that keeps seems to be touching that company, they went under, and I think he just got the rights to everything back. Yeah, and it was either is it Dark Horse or is it Image that I saw, or it might be something else. And it, it was one of the one of the newer, in, more independent companies. I think he is back to doing Evil Ernie, and uh, they're gonna do Lady Death, do Lady Death again. Hmm. So and Evil, even I think uh, there was some kind of crossover with uh, Perez, 
doing artwork for it. That which, was in Cross Gen, which may which may still be going on. Oh, really? But it's one of those I think with his health issues and all that. Right. It's kind of in limbo right now. I I heard something about it out in, when we were out in San Diego. Somebody had been banning or banning a bounce or pantying around something along those lines, but I can't remember exactly which. So I would say just watch um, watch your previews. Um, I'm sure they're gonna he'll be back with something soon. So, but that's it. Bankruptcy. Hey, here's a really, really short one. It's from Beth. It says, I really like your podcast, and I certainly hope you're thinking of doing one from Comic-Con, which we did, and, well, we thank you, Beth. Beth, I hear you calling. That's our but fourth female listener right who's made herself known, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Hey, and here's another one. This from one is from chick. Lindsay, who says girls don't read comics. Cool. Lindsay. We love Lindsay. Lindsay. Okay. It says, Dear guys, I just started listening to your podcast, and I have to say I really like it, geeking up my iPod every week. As if my entire collection of They Might Be Giants wasn't geeky enough. Hey, I love Tom They Bug. Might Be Giants. Big time fan here. I have all their CDs and everything. I, I absolutely love them. They got me through high school when everyone was listening to rap and hip-hop, and I was <laughs> be the weirdo with They Might Be Giants. Uh I haven't been into comic books in a long time, but you're all somewhat bringing it back, which would be hard because I did my senior high school project about comics as, as art, and I became so sick of comic books by the end of that. Not to say my project was all bad. I ended up reading The Watchmen, Dark Knight Returns, Kingdom Come, Ghost World, and some other pretty cool comics. And I had to make a product, too, and she has a URL here, which I will we'll put in the show notes. So now I respect the comic artist a lot more because as much as I draw comics, uh, because as much, but never in such a short time. Uh, but thank you all a lot. You're really entertaining. And damn, I wish I knew about you all when I was doing my project. You might have helped. Oh, well, keep it going. You are all great. <laughs> woot, woot. <laughs> Actually, I mean, I'm pretty sure we weren't doing this when you were doing your project, unless it was just in the unless last two months. Just, yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. it could have could been. Could have been. We're, yeah, we've been gone since March. Yeah, if it was a final uh-huh. project in summertime. Well, yeah. Yeah. A woot woot back to her. Woot 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 woot. Woot and woot. Don't pollute. That's right. Was the all the all says so? <laughs> Take a bite out of crime. <laughs> Showing our age. Here's another one. <laughs> uh, we. <laughs> Don't touch me, I'm sick. <laughs> oh, Lord. We break ourselves up yes, so right. much sometimes. No, but everybody's out there probably like, what? What yeah. the <laughs> hell are they talking about? They're all crazy. <laughs> Only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> yeah. Spooky the one. bear. Yeah. Well, who was the, who was the uh, take a bite out of crime? What was this? McGruff. 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 The crime Friendo. dog. Oh, God. Remember there was a big thing about naming him because he wasn't named for a while? Kind of, yeah. They, and then they named him? All right, we're going off on a tangent. Okay. Go ahead. Is another one from, uh, we've gotten one from before from Derek Coward. He says, Hi guys, I just finished listening to your discussion on independent comics. And I must say, even though you mentioned a lot of the best of the lot, I was surprised that there was no mention of Love and Rockets, Miracle Man, Nexus, Badger, or John Sable Freelance. I realized that you were trying to keep away from the independent superhero genre, but Innovation Comics, another name not mentioned, had one of the best titles in Hero Alliance, as well as top-notch comic adaptations of Quantum Leap and Lost in Space. You guys had a question about the first independent comic we came across. I cannot remember the first I ever bought because I always bought Eclipse, Comico, and First alongside DC and Marvel. In fact, I didn't even consider them indies, just cool. I do remember, however, passing over a black-and-white comic uh, in favor of the latest Frank Miller Daredevil one week. Years later, I realized that it was Love and Rockets number one. Oh, well. I had a blast listening to the show, as usual, and just want to say that every time Jamie talks about keeping his pimp hand strong, he cements his stature as Mac of the show even <laughs> further. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Uh, the uh, reason I didn't mention a lot of those because I just I never got into Love and Rockets. I always wanted to. Everybody would always tell me about it, but I just never got around to getting into that one. Uh, the other ones you mentioned, Nexus, love Nexus. It's coming out in a hardcover. Yeah, yeah Peter's saw that a wet spot in his pants for that yeah. one. Yeah, Stephen Rude uh, and uh, Mike Barron. No, is it Mike Barron? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah uh, good. That's it's in that previews over there. A lot of good stuff. That's I, I, I have a lot of them. I haven't gotten around to reading them. I've found a lot of them in like 25-cent bins, dollar bins, at a lot of shows. So that's I always look for those. 
Badger, another one I never really read that much. I read kind of, they did a few new ones in Dark Horse, and I didn't, they were okay. Uh, I've mentioned John Sable Freelance. Yeah, we, we talked about that. That a lot. That's Especially because it was one of the prizes that we gave away, the complete trade. Yeah, as a complete volume one. And I definitely, that's that's one, now that volume one and two trades are out there, it's, you know, go get them. Uh, and uh, the new series, I mean, Mike Grell, it's, it's the original art, you know, the original artist and writer. So, you know, if you liked it, go pick that up too. And Miracle Man, we probably didn't uh, mention it because it's like, you know, the holy grail of comics. If you can yeah. find it and, and uh, I, I've read, I read only, I think, two issues of that because I, I huh. discovered it right at the tail end. Like, right, I had the last issue published, I think, and I was like, wow, this is awesome. And then there was no more. Mm, I was like, damn it. Damn it. Damn them. I so, had them. I, I had them while they were coming out. Wow. I sold them on eBay. Yeah. I wish I, had, I still had them. Yeah. I mean, hopefully They're now good. that... They're finally s- maybe sorting out the rights. We'll finally get some some new trades so we can all catch yeah. up and read them. Yeah. But I used to. And they uh, keep teasing us with maybe printing some more. Yeah. You know? yeah, I didn't read Love and Rockets, but that was one of those that if I saw it on the shelf, I used to pull it out <laughs> and just flip through it because there might be like, yeah, there was, yeah. Uh, might be. Yeah. <laughs> Holy heck. Yeah. Um, so that was like a, a guilty pleasure kind of thing, and I know I pr- you know that's shame on me Herna- for Hernandez, yeah, yeah Hernandez, Hernandez brothers. Yeah. brothers. And shame on me for I treating mean, it like that because I heard it's really good. I mean, go bear, go bear. I think. Um, Innovation was another that was that was a good good company. Not a lot in in that that I really <laughs> cared that much about. I mean, you're right; they did do some nice Quantum Leap and some Lost in Space. He also did Dark Shadows and a couple others. I'll, I'll tell you one that you didn't mention, but you you probably picked it up because it looked like you picked up a lot of the hero type books um comico put out one called elementals and for anybody out there who right now is reading fables with uh, bill willingham or likes bill willingham's take on robin or any of the superhero type uh, genre or is reading days of vengeance right now um it was a very and i think we talked about it before but it's a very good book a very uh, more on the mature side um uh, uh telling of uh, a superhero team and well worth finding, seeking out, and buying. All right. Well, I think that's enough email for today. Um, so let's go on to our um, point of discussion for the episode. We decided we would dedicate this episode to discussing comic book magazines. Uh, there are more out there than just Wizard, if, if you only know about Wizard. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I mean, the the King of the Hill has been published long before Wizard ever started, and that is CBG mm-hmm. Comics Buyer's Guide. Yep. For a while there was it was a weekly newspaper. Um, when it well, I, I guess it started out basically <coughs> as like a a fan pamphlet type book uh, produced by uh, Maggie and Don Thompson. Um, they did it for the love of the love of the medium. They were just they were two fans who. Uh, had written for, uh, and I'm, I know I'm screwing this up. And, and uh, here, here, let me let me read. It says, uh, started in 1971 by a teenager in his basement trying to put comic fans in touch with each other. Comics Buyer's Guide is the world's longest running publication about comics. Okay. Well, there you that, go. Because that. there's a comic book for everyone, CBG delivers more than 2,000 reviews a year. There you go. That shoots my theory right out. I thought they did it, but I guess maybe they came on board. They must have gotten them, and they came on board. But they're they were like they're like the editors. Well, maybe, uh, maybe Don, it was Don who yeah. started it when he was Well, a not teenager. not not in seventy one though. He's a lot older than that. Oh yeah, well that's true. Yeah, uh, but uh, anyway, they, they they were they were the guiding force behind it. They've and Don unfortunately has uh, since uh, shuffled off this mortal coil, and uh, Maggie has taken over, and she's just done a great job. Um, I got a chance to meet her this year at San Diego, and a very gracious lady. I just thanked her for keeping up the good work. They've it used to be a weekly book, a weekly magazine, and then um, middle of last year, they came out with a big announcement they were going to go monthly. And oh, there was that was that was huge because everybody was like, "Oh, you can't do it. It's it's going to ruin the magazine. It's not going to be the same." And they're right. It's it's not the same as it was. It's it's better. I I can't believe. I mean, I, I was like worried about it myself i have i've had a subscription to this for last past 10 15 years and i was worried and man i got that first issue 
And to me, to sit down and read a magazine that takes you an entire month to read it, if you want to read it cover to cover, there are times when I have not read the entire magazine. I've gotten a new new issue in the in the mail. I'm like, oh crap! I didn't I didn't finish this. It's just I mean, there's article after article. Well, not saying the others aren't well written, but well written, well thought out articles. There's a huge, um, a huge price guide in it now. There's articles on toys. There's articles on manga. There's reviews on toys, manga, uh, weekly books, trades, graphic novels, movies. You pretty much name it in the comic, uh, you know, the comic genre of everything. TV shows, movies. They they discuss it. They they um, you know have articles about it. Uh, Peter David writes a monthly. Peter David writes a monthly um, column. Um, Heidi McDonald writes a monthly column. She also has an, uh, a podcast. She does a po- her own podcast. Um, Tony Isabella writes a monthly column. They used to have Mark Evianier write a monthly column. I wish I wish now that it's monthly instead of weekly, he would go back to writing a column for it. Um, but it's just it's it's one of the best magazines out there. I know I sound like I work for them, but um, no, I mean it's really good. You just I, I used to have a subscription uh, when I was you know, trying to be an independent comic book publisher, and it was my duty to be up on the industry, and that was back in the days of the weekly newspaper. Um, and then you just, uh, on the plane coming back from San Diego, you gave me uh, what at the time was the newest issue to read. And uh, it's incredible. There is this huge article, and when I say huge, I mean, I mean, this thing is is 20, 20 pa- over 20 pages just on the discussion of the different ages of Mm -hmm. comics, when does the golden age start and end the silver, is there even a bronze age, blah, blah, blah. 20-page article on that. Yeah. That's that's crazy. I mean, Wizard's lucky to have a 20-paragraph article on anything, and this is 20 pages. And there are two other guys I didn't make mention of, um, basically because unless you read the book, they really aren't that known. Um, There's a gentleman by the name of Craig Shutt, who they call Mr. Silver Age, and he has a he has a, a column called Ask Mr. Silver Age. He often, you know, have people write different questions about Silver Age. Man knows his stuff. Amazing what he can pull out. He he does what they call the Mopey Awards sometimes. Um, he does incredible amount. Once a once a year they have a trivia thing. He he used to do it once a year. I don't I don't know if they've done it this year or not. But just trivia questions that would you know freaking make my brain hurt they're that tough and another gen- gentleman by the name of um oh i can't i can't think of his name now it's he he does a, a title called uh canceled comics cavalcade and basically he talks about when there aren't books to talk about that have been canceled he talks about other books that he's read and it's just you will not go wrong picking up at least one issue off the newsstand if you're at a show and you and they're there because they, they do a lot of the big shows and they usually sell their their. I mean, at by the time we we're done in San Diego, they were giving away copies, so they didn't have to take them home. They're only charging two bucks a yeah, copy. Yeah, two bucks. And uh, what's the cover price on that? Five, five ninety nine. And if you get a subscription, it's way it's way way cheaper. Thirty eight yeah. bucks for a year. Right. So yeah. it's three and change. You know? right. Yeah, it, it's worth it. It's. I'm telling you, just well, you're not going to go wrong. I I would never steer this hard or push this hard for something I don't believe in. Yeah, this this particular issue is 242 pages. I mean, it's thick, and it's and it's larger than Wizard. It's traditional magazine size, whereas Wizard is a smaller, you know, comic size magazine. So you're getting a lot. Mm-hmm. And I, I've actually noticed uh, not to, but I've noticed Wizard actually adopting some of the things that they were they they started when they started this um, this forum this format uh, in their um, in their price guide. What they've been doing is they're doing like retro. Retro reviews about they'll take a, a certain book like they've been working on Amazing Spider-Man using maybe twenty thirty issues and they have like a retro review they give it stars they give a synopsis and all that and then they'll pick a couple of the books along each top page of their of their price guide and I've noticed now in Wizard Price Guide if you look at their price guide itself they're filling their price guide with much more than just the just the prices they're filling it with like little articles, little things here and there to make you actually go through. And I'm actually now reading the price guide in Wizard rather than just maybe looking at what the hot books are, seeing what you know those are worth, and then just closing it up. It makes me want to go through the price guide itself. 
And, and, and that's taking that away from Wizard. I, I still buy yeah, well, Wizard each month, let's, and let's I, I look at Wizard. Talk about Wizard next. I mean, I'm, I'm sure most people in the audience are at least familiar with it. it it's To me, it's kind of like the people of the comics publishing world. You know, it's kind of like... USA light. Today of yeah, yeah. Uh, it's newspaper? It's kind of light and fluffy, but it it's beautiful to look at because it's full color. They yep. get a lot of exclusive artwork. They get a lot of exclusive interviews, so there are things that you can't... I mean, uh, Garib told us that. You know, he said he competes with the Internet by mm-hmm. by getting exclusive information that's not that no one knows about until Wizard comes out because they get these special interviews and stuff, which... So they do. They are a powerful player in the mm. comics industry now. But you always see a good preview. They always have some nice, you know, preview comics. Like this month has a, a nice identity crisis preview in it. Um, yeah. If if you're into that kind of stuff. I enjoy sometimes when they do the wizard one halves, when you can only get it, you know, through yeah. clipping out the coupon. And yeah. They, I know they the kind of stopped that though. I yeah. That's, that's the last one I think it was like the Flash one that kind of led into the Rogues War. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They also no, did no, a Teen Titans one. Teen Titans one, too, one yeah. which, which was... I didn't get that Teen Titans one, and then when I did, and I was like... I saw what they did with it, and I was like, right? oh, crap, why didn't I get that? I've since gone back, and I think they resolicited, and I went back and bought a copy of mm-hmm. it, but had I known that they were going to do something like they did in it, I would have bought it right away. But yeah, I used to I used to be one, when I would get Wizard, I would cut that out and usually get the one half figuring Hell's Bells. If I didn't read it, I'd just you know, try to sell it somewhere down right. the road. And they have gotten a lot better. I remember in the earlier days of Wizard, their price guide was like three times as expensive as mm-hmm. anything else you ever saw. And everyone was like, who, what, who are they kidding? Like, this book uh-huh. isn't worth, you know, $15. It just came out last week. And, and it's since simmered down, and now it's a much more accurate. Well, be, for a while, it, until CBG started doing a price guide, it was the mm-hmm. only price guide on a monthly on basis, really. On a monthly really. basis, yeah. So yeah. it became the de facto standard, and then... Yeah, I, I would always, in the beginning days, I would always cringe when I would see uh, another dealer, you know, bring that out and use that as their yeah. price guide. You'd be at a show, how much of this? And they'd pull out Wizard, you go, I- right. I'll see you later. Yeah, right, right like Overstreet, which was, you know, more of a more of a, a fair, truer um, representation of what the book was worth. Yeah. Especially if it was something newer, is like, oh, well, I mean, Overstreet is only yearly, so yeah. there. Well, but at the time, there was a monthly Overstreet, wasn't there? <sighs> they had been putting one out. It 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 didn't last very long. Yeah, but that was had, like ten were, years ago or something. Yeah, it was like an Overstreet update that they would put out. Overstreet also does different conditions of each for each book, yeah. right? Right. Yeah, oh, they, yeah. they, they that's, do that's really good. A mint, so. yeah. Wizard sometimes they do some really funny articles. Uh, yeah. They did one where. <laughs> I think it was a queer eye for the superhero guy or something yes. like that. That mm-hmm. was hysterical. They took uh, gay creators and they revamped certain characters, and um, it was actually kind of cool. Some yeah. of the stuff they came up with. The Aquaman one was really neat, and uh, Martian yeah. Manhunter. And, and I always, I always wait for the uh, April Fool issue. Yeah, of Wizard because oh, uh, that suckers everybody. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> when they did that, for, the one that made me makes me laugh is the serial one by Steve Niles. Who's going to put all the the Cal Chocula and Frankenberry put them all together in a comic book, and people fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. Oh, that's, I, t- I can tell the story. Uh, we were down at Wizard World two years ago, and uh, right before the last the last day, a uh, guy had books, and all of a sudden, like, the hour before, he's like, I don't want to take these books home, a dollar a book, just anything in here, a dollar a book. And he had some great 70s stuff, and mm-hmm. he stuff had, I wish I had gone in longer, but... One of the books he had was he had a whole bunch of Captain Carrot. <laughs> now, the April Fool's joke had been Captain Carrot was going to come back. Uh, Alex Ross or Jimenez or somebody was going Jeff to. Jeff Johns and Jimenez. Yeah, Jeff Johns <laughs> and Jimenez was going to write it. And this was, and this guy before me now, I, I'm picking up because Peter Peter recommends them, and I, I've, I'm trying to get him to sit down and read them. The guy be- right before me comes up, and he has, like, Captain Carrot 1, 2, and 3. And the guy's like, what the hell are you buying these for? I mean, just jokingly, and the guy, the guy's like, "Oh, didn't you see? It was in Wizard. Gonna, Jeff Johns is going to do it." And the guy goes, "No, that was just an April Fool's joke." The guy's face like fell, oh. and he was like, <laughs> you, "You're serious?" And I, I said, "Yeah, I, I, I said, yeah, I, I have them, but I'm buying them because I want to read them. Uh, that was definitely an April Fool's joke." He's like, "Oh shit." Yeah, I'll take them anyway. But <laughs> it was, it was like, oh, I had this this big thing here, and nothing. So the the power of the April Fool's joke is is the amazing. Other, the other funny one was when Alex Ross and Paul Dini were doing the the big Treasury size yes. edition Superman, mm-hmm. Wonder Woman, Spirit of Truth, Captain Marvel, blah blah blah. They announced that the next one was going to be 
uh, Wonder Twins, Wonder yes. Twins. Right. form of water. Yep. And it had this gorgeous Alex Ross Wonder Twins with Gleek. Uh, mm-hmm. Gleek? Yeah, yeah. That's it. yeah Gleek. And it was like, you know, wow. And everybody was like, oh, that's going to be awesome. Da, 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 da. It never came out. Yep. <laughs> it was such a goof. Uh, one, a friend of ours, we were, we were still working at the comic shop at that, and uh, Mike Spillane <laughs> called up our one friend, John, who was working. He's like, He's like John. You got to put me down for that. That's 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 gonna be great. And John very very politely said, "Mike, that was April Fool's joke. It yeah. was April." Oh man, but I'd still <laughs> buy it. I think of all the April Fool's jokes, that's the one where everyone was like, "You know, you, know, you can mm-hmm. you can still come out with it. Right, you, okay, right. you got us. But now right. just tell yeah, us you're really gonna release right. it. Yeah. I want to talk about back issues. So. Yeah. Well. Okay. Oh. So bottom line is. Wizard's still worth buying. Oh yeah, it's it's, uh, it's definitely worth buying. I I will admit though there have been a couple issues in the in the most re- in recent memory that I've I've sat down and maybe plowed through in twenty minutes. Yeah, and I was very disappointed, but I still buy it each month because you know it's it's one of those things I I gotta know, I gotta be there, I gotta you know it's just inside well, the, me to know. There are so few comic book related magazines that it, there's there's room for all of them. Oh yeah. yeah. The yeah. thing I like that Wizard puts out, and they're putting out a second one soon, is remember when they used to do all those how-to columns? Right. And they How collect, to draw and Yeah. Like and they collected one, uh, a whole bunch of them in the first trade, and now there's a second trade coming out. So I bought those, and they're, they're cool. They're yeah, really and they, they got some good artists. I mean, I was yeah. like, what, Bart Sears did one, Tom Palmer did inking, and Adam Hughes. Yeah, they say talk what, about say all what, kinds Say what you want things. about Tom Palmer's inking. He knows how to do it. That's yeah. the whole thing. Basically, they're, if you're an aspiring artist, they're like, Two, three pages long each segment, you know, and they, they get an artist to do something. You know, like somebody talks about forced perspective. Perez did one on team shots. Um, Perez. Did I say Perez? Yes, Wait, you just Perez. said it too, though. Uh, yeah, but I was pointing out oh, that you said on, it wrong. <laughs> All right, I'll put a quarter in. Um, uh, Jimenez did one on powers. Um, yeah, like you said, somebody does stuff on shadows. Uh, McGuire mm-hmm. did one on facial expressions. Kevin yeah. McGuire. So I mean, there, if you're an aspiring artist, I would look that out because that's kind of that's it's a decent kind of guide. Yeah. So and like I said, they're putting a second one. And, out. and Joe Cooper did one once. Oh, so. uh, name an artist and they yeah. did it. Yeah. Adam Hughes and. Yeah, I mean, and Wizard also comes out. They also have other magazines. I mean, they have Inquest still is being put out for the collecting ga- the collecting gamers. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Toy Fair is still being put out, and they and also an have anime a, one. An, an anime one, yeah. So, so they they put out a lot of stuff, you know, each month, mm-hmm. a lot of different variety of stuff. Uh, and then uh, another magazine we have here, which is quickly turning into my favorite, I think, is uh, is Back Issue Magazine from Tomorrow's Publishing. I just bought my first issue at San Diego, and I'm still reading it. It comes out six times a year, and it's a good thing because there's so much information in here mm-hmm. that it'll take you two months to read it. It's awesome. I have a backlog of like four of them that I haven't sat down and read. They have great uh, articles, uh, different segments in their book, um, like the one, the Pro to Pro, where they pick either a classic team or a current team uh, of a book. Like this one is uh, Sergio Ara- Ara- say his name. Aragones. Yes, thank you. And Mark Evanier. On Gru, they've done one on Keith Giffen and that crew on J on Justice League. Mm-hmm. Um, Wolfman Perez yep. on Crisis. Yep. Um, so that's really cool. And then they do well, another one is called Greatest Stories Never Told, where they show a lot of unpublished artwork, mm-hmm. story ideas, things like that. Um, this this is a book for for geeks who are. Um, yeah. It's basically from like the 70s yeah, it's up. 70s and 80s, 70s really. 70s and 80s, yeah. Uh, and if you're geeks like us who are, are our age, this is the magazine for you. I saw – I've I've been collecting this since the very first issue because I knew Tomorrow's Publishing put out a book called Al- Alter Ego, which if you're an older listener and like stories about the golden and silver age, that's the magazine for you. Right. That's – I mean they, they do – Roy Thomas is, is the, the editor of that – and he just, I mean, Roy Thomas knows his shit. He, he, uh, great articles about that. And it's also a flip book where they have, they talk about um, all the Fawcett comics, um, Captain Marvel, Ibis, all those comics too. So it's you're basically in two magazines in one. I saw they were going to do this. I read what the synopsis was. It was, you know, if you read in the 70s. And, you know, it's, I've been buying it since the first issue and have not been disappointed well, yeah, let in me just, any of them. Let me just say this. This magazine is so good, it's... Number eleven. I actually want to go and get all the back issues of this magazine. 
Like, when do you buy a magazine subscription and go, oh, I want to get all the ones right. that have been published before? Not, not this all. one, I want to do that. It's, this so, one. it's like archival material here. This yeah. is something you keep on your shelf yep. forever and go back and reference again and again because it's – well, let's – It's another five ninety five book, and it's, and it's worth it. And this one uh, has a huge article on Conan. And uh, before this magazine, other than the fact that I knew that Barry Windsor Smith did some of the art in some of the first Conan series, I, like, I didn't really care about Conan. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I want to buy all those Conan collections now because I want to read every single Conan that's yeah. ever been published because yeah. all this, this magazine made me care about this character. I just... Yeah, I mean, they, they've done just... Um, like yeah, they quick, do theme quickly. issues, which are really kind of cool. I want to kind of look in the back real fast. Uh, they've done issues uh, ranging from... Horror. Um, yeah, they did, they did like a Halloween one with horror. They've done a... Um, Black History one. Black History one. Going Wonder over. Woman. There it is. There it is. A Wonder Woman. Um, I mean the, f- the first one was the... Uh, had like a... It was a, a Marvel versus DC was, was the theme of the book. Uh, then there was a totally 80s with a gorgeous Adam Hughes Maze Agency cover. Uh, there was Laughing Matters, which was a Brian Boland um, Joker cover, uh, all about the villains. Uh, a Marvel Milestones cover, which had a, a gorgeous John Byrne Wolverine talking about Claremont, Wolver- Claremont Byrne Wolverine. Adam Hughes, like we said, Wonder Woman, the Halloween, all Halloween issue. Super team ups of the 70s and 80s with a Kurt Swan, Murphy Anderson cover. Uh, then the, the one that talked about the black superheroes with a very nice Kyle Baker um, storm cover. And then there was a uh, Cosmic Comics uh, where they did um, Stephen Rood and Mike Barron for uh, for Nexus. It was a gorgeous Nexus cover. There was uh, a, a, a Raz Agul cover with... Um, uh, it was about Pope. Com- yeah, it was like it was Neil Adams mm-hmm. uh, did the cover. Uh, and then there's Conan, and then the next one, which will be out, uh, I believe, next month. Um, looks like, uh, I'm just trying to think, we got the interview with Michael Chabin, Dave Gibbons, Roy Thomas, Kurt Busiak, uh, Tom DeFalco, Ron Friends, Denny O'Neill, uh, just, you know, everybody that was doing comics when you were reading them as a kid. And it's just, you know, just great stuff. Plus, they... I mean, back issue is just only one of a myriad of books that this company puts out, all just as good. I mean, at every major convention we've been at, um, I've seen a, a stand for this group. And if you're at a major convention and you see a Tomorrow's publisher, just go up because you'll, you'll stand there and you'll just start paging. I mean, they do Kirby Collector. Yeah, um, that's what I was going to say. I mean, because uh, I know we have a lot of fans who are big into Jack Kirby, and it's mm-hmm. a whole magazine that's the Kirby Collector, the Jack Kirby Collector. Yep. And it's and gorgeous. And it's actual gorgeous size magazine. of, like, the original artwork, which mm-hmm. makes that artwork just stand. I mean, if you're not a fan of Jack Kirby, flip through one of those magazines just once, and I defy you to tell me that the man doesn't know his stuff. Yep. I mean, he – that book is amazing, and that could probably go on for years and years because he's done – I don't even know what the page count is. I yeah. forget what it is, but it's a huge number. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of his writing, of Curry's writing, but God, I can't, I can't not give him his due when I look yeah. at his artwork. It's amazing what he did with a page um, and the innovation. Because now you look at it and you go like, oh, that's, that's not that innovative. But damn, oh, at when, the time when, it was. when that was yeah. there, if you look at that compared to like, uh, you know, like a Kurt Swan Superman or, or something else, something comparable of the time that he was first starting out. Oh, my God. Such a such a difference. Yeah, we, a lot of these are, are – they have 42 issues already, <laughs> just yeah. to show you. And the, each of them is uh, 80, uh, roughly 84 pages. Some are a little less, some are more. And uh, it's tabloid size. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's a, gorgeous. And the tabloid just, – they just started that tabloid size. It, it used to be a smaller magazine, mm-hmm. kind of the size the back issue is now. Uh, and that was man when I was working at the comic shop. When that would the week that would come out, that would always be one of the books that I would pull off the shelf and sit down when we had a little bit of downtime to you know because it always gave us a little bit of downtime to right. to familiarize ourselves with what was on the shelf. And I would always pull that off, and that would always be one of the magazines I was I would flip through. We went over Alter Ego. I have to say about that book, um, the articles in that are in are so in depth. I, and actually, I will say that they're more in depth than even back issue. Yes, I can't mean, even imagine I, that. Yeah, they exactly. Are. They, I mean, they are mm-hmm. incredible. Maybe not 
well, I think some of them are longer, but they're just – the whole page is nothing but – Article sometimes. Yep, text. Yeah, they do a lot of um, unpublished artwork. They do a lot of sketches. Um, so if you're really into like the Golden Age and Sir Silver Age, like Jamie said, that's a book that you know you really need to get. And the one thing I love about the covers on that book sometimes is they take classic DC or Marvel covers and then draw new covers, flipping the company. So mm -hmm. with the Justice League, <clears throat> excuse me, fighting. Um, Starro in that very famous Brave and Bold cover. I think they put the Avengers into that, mm -hmm. and then there was the event in the Justice League number one where they're playing, where Flash and Despero are playing chess. Mm -hmm. They put the Avengers into that cover, and so they do a lot of fun things like that. Alex Ross every now and then provides a cover, um, but that that's just chock full of information. And then they have two more publications here for the aspiring comic book <coughs> professional. One's called Draw, and one's called Write Now. And the one is all about how you know tips on drawing comics, and the other one's all about tips on writing comics yeah, with yeah. interviews by famous people that fall into those categories. And it's yeah, right, right now is W R I T E, as right. in if you wrote, so right now. I don't. I've yeah. never read those. They do also. Um, they used to do Comicology. It was only four issues, mm -hmm. and the one issue was all about Carlos Pacheco. Yeah, which, I see uh, that here. It's taunting me. Yeah, it's very good. That I have was, it. That yeah. comicology was like their their version of the what's coming out now. It was their version of CBG and Wizard kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then it didn't really take off. Probably because of too much competition. Yeah. But they got the market hold on, on the older stuff. Well, they used to oh, do yeah. one called Comic Book Artist, but then it the, the it's now into its second volume, and it moved over to Top Shelf. And that that's also a very good in-depth mm -hmm. uh, magazine. It's It's... Square bound actually, and yeah, um, they take one particular mm -hmm. artist per issue basically, and just completely yeah. analyze all their stuff. And it's everything. really good. It's 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 well, that like seven ninety five. I think mm -hmm. that one. It's a little more expensive. That is the one that won the Eisner right, for best comic publication. So yeah. yeah, 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 I think it did. But when it was under two Marvels, they would do every now and then. One would be about like seventies Marvel, Jim Starlin. There'd be another one about Harvey Comics, um, Charlton. The Charlton heroes, like Blue Beetle and all them. Um, so that you could find back issues of that. Those are a lot of fun. And then they have other publications. Like it just, It's funny. It seems like they just go on and on. Um, uh, for example, like the Justice League Companion. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, they They're have doing a, a, a Titans Companion. They did a Legion, Legion. Companion. They have All-Star Companion. All -Star. They're doing a second one of that, yeah. yeah. All-Star. Yep. They have uh, Secrets of the Shadows, uh, Gene Colon, uh, like all retrospective all of his career or whatever. Yeah, was Luis Garcia Lopez. Yeah, and the uh, Brave and the Bold, Art of Jim Aparo, comes yeah. out in October. That one, the Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, that's part of their Modern Masters series. Mm -hmm. And um, they, again, it's another one where they spotlight. I think maybe they, eh, you know what, they did that to take over for comic book artists probably. Because mm -hmm. um, they did. Uh, it's what? What's the story there? Why did the magazine go to an, another publisher? Uh, that I'm honestly good? not sure. I, I, I didn't realize it had, but uh, now that he says it, I, yeah. I kind of remember that it has. They were actually they talk about it in either comic book artist or back issue, one of the two, the, the first issues of those. They actually okay. talk about why what, why the split happened. I, I, I couldn't tell yeah, you these, right now. These Modern Master Series books are kind of like... They're great. You just should have them because uh, they're bookshelf quality things. You, mm -hmm. you sit them around... And again, you can reference them forever. I mean, they, volume one is Alan Davis, two is George Perez, three is Bruce Tim, four Kevin Nolan, and five is uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, mm -hmm. which is just shipping now. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't have, have any of them, but it makes me want to have them all now again. Oh, yeah. As uh, you know, you have the George I, Perez. I have one. the Perez one, and I have the um, Garcia Lopez one, and it's they're great because they're like seventeen and nineteen dollars for some yeah. of them, but they're they're trade paperback, you know. It's, things and it's there's a website for tomorrow's uh, it's probably tomorrow's publishing it's tomorrow's dot com tomorrow's dot com okay and it's t-w-o right so definitely check that out but uh, there's yeah, another i mean these, these are magazines that we're reading i mean we're not saying there aren't other magazines out there to uh you know to pick up but these are ones that we highly highly recommend yeah the other one that i wanted to throw out is uh pace setter it's called it's a totally fan uh, written magazine. It's by Tony Lawrence down in Florida, and it's about George Perez. It's all about and George Perez. Damn, I did ah. it again <laughs> twice. What? No, I didn't get the, I didn't get it all out. The okay, oh, yeah, I used it's it close. Um, 
he does it like maybe once or twice a year, and it's a it's it's a great 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 book. Um, I think they just solicited uh, the latest one here. Here, here's my quarter. Other people gotta start putting money in here. I'm getting well, tired. We're not of stupid it. enough to say it. We home. police ourselves. Well, Kevin needs to put money in for when the phone rang. Um, <laughs> um, what was I gonna say about it? It's a great magazine. It has tons of articles, not only about him, but also about like his co- uh, Tom Smith, the colors that he really works mm-hmm. with, uh, Phil Jimenez, Marv Wolfman. They and they they spotlight certain eras. It, it'll be Titans one month. It'll be Avengers or the next magazine. It'll be his events. It'll be cross gen. Um, the latest one is about Wonder Woman, and um, this t- this this guy just does it himself. He sends out emails. It's solicited in, di- in Diamond, but uh, I had to give a shout out because I love the book. Uh, it's just yeah. right up my alley. And uh, I want I want to throw another uh, shout out to one that I actually enjoy, and it's it, it's kind of comic book related, but it's not. Um, it's uh, import that we get over here, and I'm sure like Murph and Eggers and all those guys over in England. It's probably all on their uh, their newsstand, but it's called TV Zone, and it's a British um, sci-fi magazine. And what I love about it is, um, if you're into that kind of thing, uh, they do a lot of reviews mm-hmm. on um, each. Uh, I mean, the articles are good. The, it's 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 your sci-fi stuff. It's a lot of British sci-fi stuff. And um, if you're into reviews, what they'll do is they'll review. The latest, like Doctor Who novels, they'll interv- they'll review the latest Star Trek novels. They'll review um, what they do is uh, since they get our TV shows just a little after we get them, they'll sit down and they'll like review all the all the main like they'll have reviews of Smallville. They'll have reviews of Alias. They'll have reviews of you know a whole bunch of these different different TV shows. So if you're not watching TV shows, you can get the reviews. Uh, if you're thinking of some of the some of the you know the books. You like some of those books, but you're not sure which ones. You can at least get a review, get a synopsis, and that's that's one of my favorite magazines. For that's kind of one of the fringes of a comic book magazine, but it's a, a lot of stuff that we as comic geeks enjoy. Right. And um, it's not that expensive. It's it's like seven eight dollars, but it's because it's an import. It's it's coming from Britain, um, and also uh, Titan. I guess Titan Publishing is another one that puts out a lot of stuff. Uh, for a lot of TV shows, such as I, I know right now they have an Alias magazine. They have they did the Buffy magazine. They have an Angel magazine. They have a Lost one now too. Lost right? is coming out. They're doing a special on Firefly. Um, Smallville. They have a magazine for. So there's there's a lot of good stuff coming out there that I can you know I definitely highly recommend. Other than what we talked about for the, the comic geeks, just. You'll find either find a good comic shop that has a good magazine. I know it's a lot of times that's one of the places that they the comic shops will skimp on is their magazines because they don't they don't always sell that well. Again, they aren't returnable like if you go to a Barnes and Noble. But then go to your Barnes and Noble or Borders, look at their magazines because you can find a lot of the ones the ones I just told you in their entertainment section. Just look for their entertainment section. You'll find them and just page through them. And I'm I'm telling you, they're they're not you're not going to go wrong. If you're into independent comics, we should also say uh, Comics Journal. Oh yeah, they're Definitely. more they're more off the mainstream and, yeah, and Gary Groth. Yeah, and, and they've Matt been around Kroon. for a while too. Yeah, they're, they're up to like two hundred and so three hundred. They're they're a freaking lightning rod. That's yeah. they're they're if you like the independents, definitely. It's if you're a Marvel or DC person, don't go looking for any information because they're just gonna you know call you names and yeah. kick you in the ass and send you on your <laughs> They way. didn't used to be that way. It's only, I think, in the past couple of years that they've really been like trashing mainstream books, which always makes me laugh because I think if mainstream books go away, I think the <laughs> entire no industry is going to go yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. But um, I do – Some sometimes they have some really good articles mm-hmm. um, about the industry them. and about like you know things that happen to like retailers. And I even one – of, one of the magazines I have from them has a James Robinson article about his Leave it to Chance and Starman and Golden Age. So um, there, I, every now and then, if it's something that interests me, I'll pick them up to <coughs> Comics Journal. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Cool. We talked a long time about those magazines. That, yeah, I knew a we lot would. To say. Yeah, there's. Just, I mean, and and I would suggest buy the subscription if you're going to get them. Buy you know, check it out first. Yeah, but buy a subscription. Don't get it off the shelf if you if you can avoid it because it's obviously cheaper that way. Yeah, yeah and then they know that they're actually. Have real people buying them and not right. just the shops. Right. 
All right. I think that brings us to a close. No trivia today? Oh, well, hey. Come I, on. Yes, I you know, asked for it. I don't know how the hell I forgot. How'd you forget that? Because I wasn't here last time. Did you do trivia no, last time? No, we, we were going yeah. to, we but, were going, uh, and we ran out of time, and we forgot. Show, we're like, oh, I was sitting there actually waiting. But, okay, where's the music? Uh, and then I heard the other music. I went, oh, wait. Yeah, I thought he was going for I the... i got to put more money into the thing. The dance. <laughs> Comic Geek's Week Dance Mix. I'm off my medication. I can do it now. All right. This one is entitled An Independent Edition of Stump the Rios. (laughs) Money, money, money. Inspired by your recent episode focusing on independent comics, I've decided to submit a Stump the Rios inspired by independent comics. Uh, This is from Simon McDonald. Question one. In Brian Michael Bendis' powers, who did kill Retro Girl? Oh, that Weasley guy. Right, wasn't it? I don't know his name, though. Some nobody called John Jackson Stevens. Hey, that's kind of close, right? I said Weasley guy. (laughs) Eh. (laughs) Wrong. In Jeff Smith's Rose, painted by Charles Vess, what was the name of the Rose's two dogs? Damn it. Or what were the names? Jamie, I read that and I can't. I, I you know, I, I knew uh, as soon as I heard a rose question, I was like, he's gonna ask what the names of the damn dogs were, because those were basically the only new characters they threw into it. Oh God, I can't. It was something literary, and I honestly cannot remember. Really? I think it was, but I I can't remember it. I read that. Give a me while a hint ago. if you know if you like or basically. Oh, you don't know either. Forget it. <laughs> Euclid and Cleo. Beats me. <laughs> yep. Eh. Eh. Question number three. In Robert Kirkman's Invincible, <laughs> what is the name of the first superpowered villain that Mark defeats? I'm smelling it over. <laughs> <laughs> Cement head. <laughs> Cement. Block face. <laughs> he takes down Titan in his blue and orange sweatsuit. Oh. You have been stumped, Peter. I didn't ask for this, though. We shouldn't. We should, you should have kept going. I'm See? on the medicine. <laughs> I, I take a medicine. Uh, like this See what happens when you ask for it? Uh, so Who knows independence? Simon, send Bastard. us your address. You're going to make us go broke, Peter, sending out all these prizes. We're going to send him a pencil. <laughs> I'll send him a postcard. He knows I, doesn't read independ- he knows I don't read independence. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a shame. You, you've been completely... Just okay, from now on, Fahoots. no single themed trivia. Fahoodled. I want DC, Marvel, and Independent. No, One no. of each? No, they can do whatever they want. I don't care. <laughs> it's all about the fun, right? It's all about sharing the love. Yeah. So, so I owe another dollar. A dollar care. fifty. I could have bought myself a slice of pizza like I wanted to before I got here. Going broke. Oh, you starving artist. Yeah. That's a heck of a look at that. About four or five bucks for the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. Yeah. Well, that's officially the end of the show now. <laughs> now that you've just taken us out on a down note. <laughs> I'm such a loser. Except for this guy. He's jumping around at home going, woohoo! Yeah. I'm getting something. <laughs> you might be really disappointed. And they, said, <laughs> and they said my name. Shredded copy of Badger. That's right. I have some, yeah, I have some stuff that no one would buy on eBay. Maybe I'll send it out to this guy. I saw that copy of War Dancer sitting back there. Sitting back. <laughs> yes. I don't even know what that is. It's one of those uh, Defiant <laughs> books. Yep. Oh, Plasm? Yeah. Warriors of Plasm. Plasm. Yeah. Warriors of Plasm. Yeah. Dave Lyon. All right. Uh, our email address is comicgeekspeak at gmail.com where you can try to stump the Rios and any questions or anything you want to say. And uh, send your geeks of the day, which we haven't done for the last two times. Even though I have them, I just forget about them. Nope. Uh, also, our blog is comicgeekspeak.blogspot.com. Uh, for more information about all the other comics podcasts, go to comicspodcast.com. Uh, we give a big thanks to Bob at GameCircuit.net for making the show possible by hosting it. Uh, vote for us at Podcast Alley uh, and subscribe to us using iTunes, please. Uh, if you want, you can get a T-shirt. They are $10, and that includes shipping. Uh, they are found 
on our blog. You can order one. And uh, once again, we're coming at you in conjunction with World Famous Comics. And as always, we are uniting the world's mightiest heroes, one listener at a time. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.